The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Broadcasting live from the Toscano Cigar Soundstage in Salem, New Hampshire, USA. And broadcasting around the world, this is the Cigar Authority. Transmitting since 2010, the Cigar Authority is the longest-lasting cigar podcast ever. Grab a cigar and light them up, light them up, light them up. This is the Cigar Authority. Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. Saturday, February 17th, 2024. Blind Cigar Reviewing. How do you do it? Should you do it? Is there a right way to do it? Is there a wrong way to review cigars? Plus, new cigars out or coming out. Welcome, everybody, to The Cigar Authority. And you're listening to The Cigar Authority, now in its 14th year, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast. Awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. And you catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog at thecigarauthority.com. All right, this is um, Blind Cigar Reviewing. If you're part of the Cigar Authority Care Package, Jonathan is not going to tell you anything about the cigar because he doesn't know anything about it, nor does Ed Sullivan because it is a blind cigar. Talking about blind cigar reviewing, and we'll actually do it as we do it. But you know what it is? I do. Somebody had to know. Really? And and I thought about possibly having somebody else do it, put the answer in an envelope or something like that. but. Uh, I, I, but you just like to know. Yeah, and, and here's where the problem lies, is before the show even started, Jonathan immediately started guessing what the cigar is. <laughs> and and uh, that, that turned Dave into Maduro, Dave, so my apologies to all of the listeners. Uh, He's going to be a little angry at the start of the show. He'll calm down. So this is not a guessing game. We're not trying to fool the guesser, and we're, not tr- we're trying to learn how to taste cigars and evaluate and blind taste test a cigar. Um, and that's what we're going to try to do today. It's a method used to evaluate or compare different cigars without knowing the identity. Not guessing the identity right. has nothing to do with it. We can play a guessing game someday and guess what the cigar is. He, but he's guessing the cigar without tasting the cigar. He didn't smell the cigar or anything. He looked at it and said, I know what that cigar is already. Huh. And he made two guesses. And if they he, were if he, wrong. If he knew what it was. Right. How, how would you have two guesses? No, then you don't know what it is. You think you have an idea of these two, maybe. So that was definitely a no. Then I, he, I said, well, write them down because you're going to uh, use this against me at the end and say, oh, I knew exactly what it was. Mm-hmm. Exactly what happened. Pam was here. She saw it. She witnessed it. There was a witness. She watched you slowly deteriorate into Maduro Dave. No. And uh, then you got them wrong. So and now you have a third? No, you got rid of one for sure. That you, you know it's not that, definitely. But I told you both were wrong. But you were willing to cancel one of the two and leave the other wrong one up. Yes. Yes. I'm not going to say it. You can calm down. Hmm. I won't say anything. Um, oh, because I know why you picked that. So he is now what we call playing the man. Wow. He is playing me for a certain reason. Oh, I get what you're doing. So that's not what we're doing here at all. We're blind, t- we're okay. blind testing cigars, but <laughs> ooh, it just came to me exactly why you ended up picking that. So people that are listening don't understand what that means. <laughs> and when we pick blind cigars out for each other, all the half time. the game has nothing to do with what the cigar is going to taste like. It has to do with knowing the person who picked the cigar mm. and being able to pick it without cutting it or lighting it you, just because you, 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 you know the person. See it. You wouldn't have to even see it in some <laughs> right. cases because you've been talking about it. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's completely wrong. Anyway, remember I did this months ago. Mm. Okay. Because in order to get it into the care package, I right. had to do this months ago. Um, so you can do this at home if you're not part of the Cigar Authority Care Pack and you do it with a buddy of yours and he does it with, with you. Obviously, you can't do it to yourself because you're going to know what, what it is. So 
then you're going to be really able to evaluate it, which is the fun part of this whole STARS review that's going on. As we're building up more information, um, more cigars are going in, and we'll get into some of that. Um, so here's how to do a blind taste test. Have someone select an item to blind taste test. Uh, in this case, it was a box press cigar in the care package. If you're not in the care package, have someone remove a band, uh, even from one of your cigars in, in your own humidor, it can be, um, or grab your cigar. We've had customers come in before, say, here's 20 bucks. Go take pick the, me something Pick out. me a cigar, take the band off, and don't give me the change till later because they don't even want to be fooled of how much money it is. Um, have them, if they're not going to be with you, put the answer in a, in a sealed envelope uh, with, your, with your change in it, and uh, do not open until it's, until it's over. For those that are in here, hopefully you, you're smoking this cigar along with us, and this is a um, maybe a six-inch box-pressed... A um, little bit of a toothy wrapper. Yeah. Um, you should include... Um, if you're doing this for somebody, include a cigar maybe they're not comfortable with. For instance, if Ed Sullivan doesn't like box press cigars, I don't. We make it a box press cigar. Things that you're uncomfortable with, um, or have a bias, including Maduro. If you don't think they like Maduro, if you don't think they like box press cigars, smaller cigars, thicker cigars, whatever. Don't give them. So we go-to. should be giving Ed Sullivan uh, box pressed seventy ring gauge cigars. Because that's way outside of his Maybe. comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sumatra wrapper. Right. And, and it's, it, this is not a one and done thing. So you're learning this. But do it consistently like we do. Yep. And you get really good at it. Um, you should use different brands, variations, entire uh, different uh, items within the category. Numbers or labels. on You can number or label each one discriminately if uh, you're doing multiple cigars to them. Uh, I've gone as far as to even um, write on the cigar um, with a with a marker, you know, a number or, mm. or something to put on there um, because you're not going to uh, end up tasting it. You don't want it too close to your lips or anything right. like that. But I've done that uh, if you don't have a paper band to put on it or whatever. Uh, set up a neutral testing area that's adequate lighting and minimal distraction. Provide the participant with water, maybe unsalted crackers to cleanse the palate to start somebody off. Analyze the results accurately. Be fair as possible. Uh, you're only fooling yourself at the end of it. This is an educational thing for you to get better, especially if you're one of those people that say, Everything tastes the same. There's not these flavor notes and all this stuff. This is what's going to end up uh, helping you with that. Use all your senses, including taste, smell, texture, appearance, everything you can to evaluate it. Uh, Write a scorecard or score sheets to uh, record your impressions as you're rating the cigar. This is something you for to have afterwards, and you'll see how much you improve, how quickly you improve as this is going on. Uh, Do not watch others write about it. If there's multiple people that are doing this, um, don't watch what they're saying. Well, Uh, power of suggestion ends up coming into play. If they're tasting chocolate notes, that's the first thing your brain's going to look for. Right. Uh, Stay off the chat box if you want to be accurate. So you're going to see people, some people are going to be on the chat box that are smoking the cigar. They're guessing it. They're they're putting tasting uh, notes that are on it. Um, If you don't want to see that, and you shouldn't, don't look at it uh, because it's going to influence, as Jonathan says, it is going to influence. All of a sudden, you're going to say, shit, I'm tasting graham cracker, just like just like he is. But if, Are we going to say what our flavor notes are, or are we just going to write them down? I'd say write them down. Okay. Write them down. Let's stay, stay away from it and not hurt, hurt somebody's experience on it. At the end of it, you say whatever you want. We'll, we'll, we'll get into it. Analyze the results. Identify any patents or preferences, uh, which... By the way, you'll end up saying, well, it turns out I do like Sumatra. or I love it. <laughs> yeah, who yeah. knows? You don't know. But sometimes when this ends up happening, you say, I always thought I hated Sumatra. I always thought I hated Maduro. I, unfortunately, we're not doing this blindfolded, but we did do it before blindfolded. Did, yeah. And some people mm-hmm. can't detect a Maduro to a Connecticut, which is amazing. Uh, blind taste testing uh, can be fun and informative, and you'll explore different flavors, textures, and uh, qual- quantities of qualities of different cigars. 
and uh, you'll really figure out what, what you like in this case. So get yourself a flavor wheel. So you need a flavor wheel to help you go along. And you can get one really quick. You can go to thecigarauthority.com. On the right-hand side, you'll see get a free flavor wheel. You go in there. You're going to plug in your email address. And immediately back, they're going to print. They're going to uh, send, you send the this. Wheel. You'll get it immediately. So do that now if you don't have one. Um, and um, you can just keep it on your screen. Or you can print it out if you want to print it out or something. Or you can look at another flavor wheel. Whatever. Find a different flavor wheel of... Um, you know, there's lots of ones for liquor and all that stuff. Anything's going to work, but it's going to help you look at these flavors and almost eliminate things that, oh, I'm not getting any ginger or sage or tarragon type of thing. There's no nutmeg cinnamon. This is more in the leather, coffee, chocolate um, area or whatever it is, and then you're going to hone down as, as it goes on. So do that now. Sometimes you taste mis miscellaneous. Miscellaneous? Yeah. Yes, because that is on here. <laughs> Well, you can't figure out what it is. You can't. You can't figure it. Just write miscellaneous. And you can't I'm, be wrong. I'm afraid I'm not going to be very good at this today because I'm mostly going to taste cough drops. Yeah, you've been sick now. It's two weeks. Uh, eight days. Eight days. All right. Eight days exactly. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it overlapped two shows, so I know it's that's two, two weeks, weeks in it's two weeks in show time. So we're going to make yourself a review sheet also. Uh, the one we do for the Cigar Authority for the, for the Stars Review um, asks, uh, take a look at the cigar. You're looking at the quality of the color of overall construction, uh, combustion, uh, how the ash goes, which is not going to have anything to do with flavors, but it's going to, you'll see if it ends up changing your thought of what a cigar looks like, and the next thing you know, you taste it. When it comes to bands, if there's red on a band, you typically taste cinnamon and things like that. It's cherry. the weirdest thing. A lot of cherry. Yeah. It's the weirdest mm. thing that ends up happening. This is what's great about the band is removed, and you're not going to taste that. If there was yellow on it, oh, my God, it's creamy. It's buttery. It's Looking at things have, have a, a, a big uh, factor when you're doing it. So uh, blind testing, with the band being removed in this case, um, that goes away. So... Um, then we're going to taste the cigar, first third, second third, final third, uh, and overall impressions of it. And uh, oh, you can also dictate of what you think the uh, strength profile was on that. Uh, again, blindly, um, and um, seeing if you think it's mild, medium, or full-bodied, or whatever number you want to associate with that. And we'll, we'll give you some numbers that are happening on um, uh, the... Stars Review. When it comes to Cigar Journal, which uh, all three of us do reviews for Cigar Journal, um, they ask for things like um, how the veins are. Is the cigar silky or sandy? Um, the, the color of it from very light to almost black. The construction, soft or firm, and everything in between. It's so like a scale that you put in between. Um, is it even or uneven? Right. Um, how is the draw from poor to perfect? And then they ask, you, they, they ask you to, the flaws because you could say, okay, this has a poor draw. Maybe it's drawing way too loose, and that's what they want you to put down there. Or it's a poor draw because it's drawing too tight. Right. And then right. you write that down. And you hang on to these things, and, and you get the answers later on, and it's unbelievable how you really hone your, your skills into it. Um, they want to know how the smoke is. Is it little or is it voluminous? Is there a lot of smoke or a little smoke? It's a long way before they get to... Um, um, somebody uh, emailing me um, or messaging me. Um, is the ash flaky or firm? Is it very dark or white? Is it uh, one-dimensional or multi-layered? Is there little harmony or much harmony? Meaning, do the flavors complement each other? Yeah. So graham cracker and cinnamon would be complementary. If it was graham cracker and over-roasted broccoli, maybe not so Correct. much. Correct. I would believe so, too. Um, You're against over-roasted broccoli. Body, elusive or full-bodied. Elusive. Elusive. I like that. That's what it says. You huh. see it every every time you do a review. Yeah. You know? I never choose elusive. So, <laughs> and what, what would exactly would that mean? If it says full, it means mild, right? Elusive? Elusive would be, yeah. It's just you're, you're, it's difficult to perceive 
that there's any body there at all. Huh. Okay. All right. That would be so, the low score. It very rarely happens. It sounds like a translation thing. It's not the yeah. best word for English. Not in English, but no. then it's, the form uh, was in German originally. Mm -hmm. Boldness or power, mild to bold, and the finish short or long. And then they want your from your cold draw, your first, second, and third tasting notes. And then they're looking for a rating of 1 to 100. They don't ask um, a strength number. Uh, but they do ask you the boldness and power of it uh, in between power. there. So you can do whatever you want that's going to end up helping you. Uh, but, you know, th there's ways we have to figure out how to uh, get that. This is not a guessing game. We're not guessing what the cigar is. And at the end, we can take a few minutes and, and listen to Jonathan guess at that point. And mm. you can put your, your things in the chat box. We're in on Facebook Live and we're on YouTube. And... Um, the other thing, right? Yeah, and we're on the other thing. Rumble? Rumble. Do they have a chat box? They do. They do. Okay. So they can be putting the answers down, and uh, I don't know where Ed's looking or anything, but uh, right now it's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. So this is where we can do the cold draw, right? We're not going to say it out loud, though. We're just going to write it down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got something. And do you feel like changing your mind completely of your guesses that you had earlier? Wow, he keeps, he <laughs> did change his mind, but it's interesting where he's going. Uh -huh. It's interesting where he's going. Um, and, you know, you can think country of origin, too. Is this a Dominican? Is this a Honduran? Is this a Nicaraguan? Is this a Costa Rican? Is it Zimbabwe. A Mexican? Is it Zimbabwe? Zimbabwe. That, uh -huh. would, that would be a terrible guess, but no, <laughs> it's not. But we're not guessing. But this is for your, for your notes. <laughs> <laughs> this is what's going to piss him off is he's, he's encouraging you by saying yeah. that's a horrible guess. Right. Meaning it's okay to guess, but no, it's, it's not, not okay, okay to guess. I'm just going to reiterate no, that. It's not a, because there's not a Zimbabwe cigar. That's why no. I'm saying that, right? There isn't one. No, there's a cigar with Zimbabwe tobacco yes, in it. But there but isn't. No. They're not. Zimbabwe Puro. <laughs> no, I yeah, don't believe so. I don't believe there is. Um,. <laughs> All right, so now you have that flavor note, which, which I taste very pronounced right now, early on, that this cold draw flavor note, but I'm, I'm not going to say it to ruin it on anybody else. Um, and it's okay on a cold draw to end up tasting this, but this one draw, that's the law bullshit that happens on the Ash Hole show is so ridiculous. We might have to get rid of it. I, as, I would love that. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's so no, ridiculous. There's no way to end up being able, you know, yes, there's a cold draw and there's a flavor note of the cold draw. Once you light the cigar, I mean, you, it's, one so, draw, it's so rare. And I mean, one in a thousand times where your cold draw flavor carries over into the right, red flavor. Right. Usually it's okay. That's gone completely. But boy, it's there now. Uh, and I was resting this cigar on this lighter because it does have a cigar rest, but this is a box press cigar on a cigar rest that's a round cigar. Is that allowed? I don't even well, know if it's allowed. Little, there's a little bit of a flatness at the bottom of that curve, and a little. Has anybody ever made a cigar holder for a box press cigar? It would just be flat. It would just be ridiculous. No, you'd have to have sides to it. It'd be a little... Do you have to? Because it's not going to roll. It doesn't flat. roll over. Anything yeah. flat. That's what the box <laughs> press is for. We're going to light our cigar today with the Oculus by Vertigo. It's a new lighter by them. Uh, this features a cigar rest in the lid, a flip top, and three jets fueled by the patented Vertigo big-ass tank. At the bottom, you have easy adjustment and a flip-out bullet punch, all for the low price of $29.99. That is the Oculus by Vertigo. When's my new lighter coming in? Uh, I was hoping that it was coming in this week at Sullivan, but I haven't seen it. We got some good lighters coming mm -hmm. in. Uh, I don't know if they're holding off for the trade show that's coming in Maybe. March or whatever. Uh, well, they shipped this one. This is new. Yeah, but uh, great stuff coming in. Just when you think they couldn't do any better, this Lotus company, the next one comes out and it's like, 
oh my god. Um, very good for uh, the arthritis hands, by the way. Really? This one, yeah, very good. Huh. And it is a single action <laughs> because you have to open the lid, then you have to pull it down. When you pull it down, only one thing happens. Mm. Only one thing happens when you pull it down. Yeah, I don't care. It's a, this yeah. is double action because you, the user, do two things. You flip the lid, and then you pull the igniter. So you're double action. You are double action, not the lighter. The lighter yeah, is a single action. It's my bit. But you. It's my bit. You I'm don't get to going, change my bit. I know. I've learned. I've learned. You learned about guns. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So it says number three here, uh, the stars reviews. I don't know. I have <laughs> nothing here of number three. Here it is. Okay. So we started this on August 2nd. That's when the um, press release went out that said the Cigar Authority unveils the smoke, taste, and review system. Smoke, taste, and review system. Stars. That's also where it comes known out. as. There's, nope. a, there's an AKA there. You don't know what that word means. You don't even know what it means. doesn't matter what it means. No. <laughs> it's stuck. Um, rating system uh, is no longer conducted by us that are doing it. It's people that have decided to take part in it. Uh, impartial evaluation without any predetermined uh, biases. They do not know what the cigar is. Um, besides Cigar Journal, I don't think anybody else does it this way. Uh, with uh, and, and this is even tighter than Cigar Journal in the respects that the person that's reviewing actually bought the cigars. And they had no idea how much they paid for them until after the review comes out. We know what they paid, that they got $20 into it, but they don't know. Right. So they, they're buying, they're getting two of the same cigars for $20. So they're $10 in for the cigar. It could be a $50 cigar, or it could be a Three dollars cigar. They don't know until after the case. And I'll go through some numbers with you because I, I have a review of each thing that came out and how much dollars and everything, so they can see how they're doing so far. But um, the cigar is focused solely on reporting and finding without any uh, bias noted. Um, it's been out there again. August second was the first reviews that came out, and we've done a whole bunch since. And I have all the different reviews. Um, that happen over this time. So, um, should you be able to get some notes by now uh, in smoking the cigar? I told I have you two the, down. The, the one draw, right? So now, where there's a little ash to the cigar, and you've been able to take a couple puffs, we can start tasting notes. Often, I, there's a difference between the initial light and the way that the cigar develops. And that has to do, especially on shorter cigars, where they place the tips in mm. the blend. So in a six-inch cigar, the flavor for that first inch is probably going to be muted. And then when you get to the five-inch mark, that's when you can expect your first major flavor change. So this is a six-inch cigar. So I would only I, – I put down a couple of notes, but I'm really going to smoke it until I get to that one-inch mark and see if there's a pop of flavor that happens. Which can still count as your first Correct, third. and that's what, that's what I'm going after on a six-inch. On a seven-inch cigar, you're going to smoke it almost for that first third, so you've got to put something down. And then at the five-inch mark, you'll typically get that pop. So what are we tasting? Are we tasting the smoke that's in our mouth? The answer is no. If, if there's smoke in your mouth and you're trying to taste what that smoke tastes like, it is smoke. That's what you taste. What you, you taste... Take, go ahead, You taste some smoke, you fucking asshole. Right. Now, if you blow the smoke out, and then you taste after, the smoke is blown out, and then smack your lips together, The most open and close your mouth. Now, the, what do you taste? That is the flavor, not the taste of the smoke. If you, with your mouth closed, if you chew a little bit, too, you can move and generate some retronasal activity without pushing smoke through your nose because it stings my nostrils. So I like to just do it after I get the smoke out and do a little chewing motion or move the air back and forth through my nasal cavity with my tongue and I get the additional flavors that way. Yeah. So the after effect, and if you go to Hanky Kellner from Davidoff, he would say uh, 
his whole thing is based on the tongue, not the entire mouth. It would be the tongue. And after the smoke has been removed out of there, as uh, it's, it's what's left at the end as things start dissipating, and then all of a sudden, it, possibly with you right now of smoking the cigar, the, the strength that, or the flavor that's left is down the center of the tongue and on the tip of the tongue. And he would say, okay, the tip of the tongue, where you still have that sensation happening there last, is where saltiness would come from. This exact cigar, mm-hmm. and I hate to bring up a flavor to you, but just so you end up doing it, take some of this cigar, you blow the smoke out, and then it's, it's pretty much a whole mouth feel at this point, and it's starting to dissipate, and at the end of it, it's down the center, and it's the tip. Are you, are you getting that, too? That's the last thing that's happening to you? Maybe a little. And not that I'm, mm. I'm buying the whole tongue Well, because you're, you, you, have all, you have taste buds yeah. across your entire tongue. Some people have concentrations of uh, flavors in certain areas, but by and large, humans have their taste buds that can detect all of the flavors across the entire tongue. Yeah. Now that I've said it, and I, I said I wouldn't say it, but I said a flavor note to you, which is saltiness, now you're tasting saltiness. I'm, and I'm, I hope most of it isn't because I said so. Jonathan will disagree anyway, no matter what. Mm-hmm. It's just well, I have nature. my notes down. Yeah. So. so you never added any saltiness to it? No. Okay. Good. So I'm not just being obstinate. All right. That's what I taste. Okay. And you're looking at the cigar, how it's performing, which shouldn't have any flavor notes to you, but everything going good with it? It's burning yeah, well? Yeah, so you want to think in terms of, okay, uh, when a woman hits about uh, 40 years old, she stops giving a shit how thick the mascara is, and that line gets a lot thinner. So you, uh, if the thinner is that, that line is... that true at all? No, it's not, it's not true I at made all. that up. <laughs> <laughs> I made it up to get Dina to say, what? Yeah. <laughs> and it worked. Yeah. So the thinner this mascara line is on that outside wrapper, the more well-aged the wrapper is. The other thing you're looking for is the color of the ash. The whiter the ash, the less carbon is left over after the combustion of the cigar. So the whiter the ash typically would mean that you have more aged tobacco, at least at the start of the cigar. All right, so keep smoking the cigar as we get into the question of the week. And the question of the week is brought to you by Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust. It's time for the question of the week, brought to you by Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust. Makers of Sobra Mesa, Nike Rita, Sin Compromiso, Wastra de Saca, and a whole bunch of other cigars that don't suck. And the following message was submitted through the Contact Us page of the CigarAuthority.com. Question about strength rating on the stars slash boners. Here we go. Stars. He doesn't say boners. I added that. Mm-hmm. Uh, a warm Arizona greeting to the best cigar podcast and YouTube channel ever. I truly wow. love all of the panel, but to be honest, I lean toward Ed Sullivan with my greatest of admiration of and affection. Makes sense. Ed, your witty banter... And dry humor truly makes me laugh every week. I think LOL. he should win the prize. I think right, he he's not eligible the- for the prize. <laughs> oh. <laughs> My question is, being a member of the Stars Review team, oh, I good. have a problem with the strength rating section of the reviews we are responsible for. Hmm. My issue is that before diving headfirst into the cigar world, I was a heavy cigarette smoker. Ah. Two to three packs a day for 20 years. A heavy snuff user. Two cans a day for 10 years. Wow. And at times, I smoked and dipped simultaneously. That being the case, I have no notice of nicotine strength in cigars. Any cigar. Mm -hmm. I have even smoked the Onyx, and the only thing I noticed was a slight spinning head effect. Since I have this issue, I'm not sure how to properly rate the strength on cigars, and I've committed to reviewing honestly and thoroughly... I feel I'm not doing justice to the rest of my rating team and to those that read and use the reviews. If you can guide me as to what I can do to better judge the strength of the blind cigars, it would be helpful. Well, we have a whole show coming up on that where we're going to end up creating the first ever uh, strength meter 
based on cigars. And I wonder if he would be able to do that, to know that, okay, you take a Macanudo and you say, all right, we're going to make the claim that Macanudo is a one. It's a one no matter what. Agree or disagree with it, it's a one no matter what. And then you move up and let's say... Ashton is a two, mm-hmm. and then you're smoking the cigar, and you say, "Is it closer to one or two? You know. And then again, it, it keeps going up, and there'll be multiple cigars within each class that we consider the same strength. And then you look at that meter, and you say, "Okay, this is a little stronger, or this is a little milder than this particular one." So I'm going to say to Shane something that I would normally say to people not to do, Whoa. but. This is probably a person that would benefit from putting the smoke through their nasal cavity. Yeah. Because you 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 may need to have more sensation to be able to detect that initial strength. And you'll you'll feel it more I'm sure he probably does because if as a cigarette smoker they automatically did it anyway, right? It probably hard for did. him not to Some inhale. Did. Inhale the cigar on top of it and trying to get Don't inhale the cigar, that's bad news. Yeah. Hmm. Your lungs are acidic and the cigar is alkalinic. It's bad news. Yeah. But it, uh, putting it through your nose a little bit, um, and then if that's not enough, put it through a little more. And maybe you have to work all the way up to a full puff through the nose, and you'll have a better idea of the strength profile. The only thing I'll say wrong with our star reviewers right now that looks dramatically wrong is their strength numbers. And even Ed will agree to it there. You know, as, as much as I think everything's stronger yeah. than it usually is, I mean, they're really, I mean, they don't give anything more than a three, no matter right. what it is. So, uh, oh, I better get this done. Dumbarton Tobacco and Trust expressly disclaims any liability for the answers provided with no guarantees of accuracy or usefulness, except that our cigars don't suck. Yeah, I help him have a problem with everything we say. Everything. <laughs> Every, I, I wonder how it. annoying he puts, this is. He puts the smoke through his nose himself. Yes, he does. He does. But he'll say there's no problem with it. Whatever. Whatever. Uh, early thoughts here on the blind cigar. Um, no flavor notes, but it, as far as that performance. All right. Without question, this is a higher price cigar. The ash is completely stacking dimes. The combustion line on that outside wrapper is super, super thin. And box press cigars tend to not burn as true as Even. round cigars. Yeah. This is burning completely even. Yeah. So this tobacco has been worked, and this cigar, I believe, to be a higher-priced cigar, I would say in excess of 15, maybe even as high as 20. Uh, I'm not going to say. I was going to ask him strength so far, but let's let's hang on to it at the end and and get all your thoughts of what that is. We're going to take a break and when we come back, we have the stats from the cigar reviews um, of the past. The highest rated, the lowest rated, the most expensive, the least expensive, the average cost. Uh, Is it worth it? And if it is, how can you be part of the cigar uh, stars reviews? We're live in the Toscano Soundstage and you're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Romeo y Julieta Reserva Real Nicaragua. The Nicaraguan expression of America's beloved brand, Reserva Real. Reserva Real Nicaragua is a Nicaraguan puro, meticulously blended by Rafael Nodal and made by A.J. Fernandez. The Reserva Real Nicaragua will take Romeo lovers and Romeo novices alike on a journey through premium Nicaraguan tobaccos. Reserva Real Nicaragua. It'll steal your heart again. Surgeon General warning, cigar smoking can cause lung cancer and heart disease. There's a cigar in the shop called Elberton. Elberton, Elberton, there's a cigar in the shop called Elberton, cut and light one now. Elberton cigars are handmade premium cigars from Nicaragua, created by the J.C. Newman Cigar Company. Expect a smooth, hearty smoke with a little spice and a great value. There's a 
cigar in the shop called Elberton, Elberton, Elberton. There's a cigar in the shop called Elberton. Cut and light one now. In a world where the open road calls to the adventures, there is a cigar that pays tribute to a journey of resilience and determination. Introducing the Christoph Guardrail Cigar, a testament to the indomitable spirit of its founder, Glenn Case. The Guardrail's blend takes you on a captivating journey through the world's finest tobacco regions. Brazilian Maduro, Dominican Binder, and a unique touch of Zimbabwe. This medium to full-bodied cigar offers a variety of flavors that will delight your senses. With notes of caramel, the smoothness of French roast coffee, and the allure of dry cocoa, the God Rail's complexity is unmatched. Whether you're celebrating life's victories or savoring moments of camaraderie, the Christoph Guardrail Cigar brings people together with its unforgettable flavor and creamy finish. Take your taste buds on a ride they won't forget. Experience the Christoph Guardrail Cigar today. Christoph Cigars, take them for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. With over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy, the Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple. Exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar making process. Padron Cigars, they give you the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padron Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. This is Eric Newman from the J.C. Newman Cigar Company, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority. And we are back, powered by the West Tampa Tobacco Company, featuring West Tampa Black, White, and Red. It's West Tampa Cigars, passion with a purpose. And we are smoking a blind cigar. Nobody knows what it is. Nobody on the panel knows. The thousand people that are out there in the care package, you guys don't know what it is. You have, should have finished your first third of the cigar. There should be something in your reviews now of the taste notes that happen in the first third. Why in the first third? Because it should change. Like Jonathan said, we should have got past an inch or so into the cigar now and then a different tobacco, the tips of some different tobaccos should arise. So we're talking a long-filled premium cigar, which long fill means tobacco from end to end. But no cigar is really a long-filled cigar completely because they mm-hmm. take the ends of the tobacco, the tips, and they tear them, and then they place those tips in certain areas, which is the first third, the second third, and the bottom third. Usually, not every single company does it, but usually they do. So the, the cigar ends up getting um, a little milder, and then boom, there should be a little pop, and another inch or so, and a little pop. And it's, it's all about the roller. If you get a chance to ever go to a cigar factory and watch when they do it, you'll see that exact thing happen. That, you know, what, what are they doing? Why are they doing that? And, and that makes a cigar f- go from good to great, in my opinion. And it's why they, you, when you're smoking certain cigars that present a little stronger at the beginning, why they mellow out and then why often the strength returns. And it's because you're hitting those specific tip points in that blend. Yeah. So, uh, and, you know, I, I had said before, what if they took a cigar and they took a certain tobacco 
and it wasn't in the blend, but it was only the tip points. You know, TSM tips off and do this, and, you know, I want to go crazy and invent my things when I go into, into factories and stuff, but they usually say something in Spanish. I don't know what it means, but it's, it's derogatory, <laughs> nevertheless. Do they say gor- <laughs> gordo, jefe? <laughs> Hefe. <laughs> yeah. I always thought when they say hefe when I would walk in that they were calling me heavy or fat. A heifer. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes fat, the hefe. But it meant like the president or what is the it? The boss. Mean? The boss. Yeah, something like that. Um, all right. So now we should start getting on to the second flavor notes as this is going on. And as we do, and you're tasting it uh, every which way, you're letting the, the smoke go out and you're tasting what's left on there and you're trying to pick up these notes because you're looking at your flavor wheel and you're detecting where you are and you notice you'll stay in that area of that flavor wheel. I don't think you're going to jump from um, getting cinnamon and and notes like that to all of a sudden jump over and all of a sudden start getting uh, coffee notes and, and leather. Usually that doesn't happen, but we'll see. Yeah, there's typically a base note that you'll yeah. s- that you'll taste throughout the cigar, and then the other subtle notes will change. How many cigars went out so far in the um, blind reviews for the stars? The answer is 32. There's been eight rounds of four groups that have gone out. How many been reviewed that we've said is 28 so far because Ed Sullivan hasn't said number 29, which he will in a little while. Oh, no, I'm sorry, the other way around. How many have been published? 27. 28 is, is uh, what you'll end up uh, saying now. Um, the average price of all the cigars that went out. So the people in the Stars Review are paying an extra $20 to their care package to do the review. They're getting two of the same cigar. Um, and someday I may change that to one as people get to the point where I think they can uh, evaluate it on one, one cigar. Uh, but right now, it's still been two of the same cigar. What I would, If they get it in the first one, what I would say to them, if you're listening cigar review, is if you got everything you needed from the first one and you did your review, you could save the second one for when the review comes out and then smoke it again after you know what it oh, is, yeah. which could be interesting, right? Um, the average price of the cigars so far were $16.50 per cigar. Hmm. So you got two of them. $33 is the average, and you paid 20 So you're getting a good deal. Hmm. Uh, we didn't throw any, any low-price stuff in there yet. Um, the lowest has been $7.49. It was a Montosa Natural at seven forty nine. Hmm. The most expensive was the Merrifeld Mare Churchill, $51. And you got two of them. Um, and everything in between uh, those, those two numbers. The average review score was 89.92, which is pretty accurate because I did give top-notch cigars all the way through. Mm-hmm. We didn't throw any dogs in yet. Uh, there will be, so don't be surprised and be hating on me when you do it, but we're going to see. We're going to put lower price stuff in mixed in with good stuff. Um, the highest score yet um, was a 92, and it was the Perdomo 30th Anniversary Sun Grown, 92 rated. The lowest was Aladino, and it was the Sumatra LE. Wow. Hmm. Sumatra. They didn't know that they had a Sumatra, Ed Sullivan. Maybe yeah. you're, you're on to something here, right? Could be. They Aladino didn't. does a good job of getting the yuck out of the Sumatra. I don't think they took quite enough out. Apparently not. Um, is there a group that scored lower or higher than others? So now we're looking at these four groups that are there because there's enough time mm. in there to know if I got a group that always scores bad or right. always scores too high or anything. It's been very good. Uh, group B, B is in Bob, if you're a part of that group, you guys has suck. given three of the top five scores and the only group that gave more than a 91 rating. Um, Wait, does is, that mean they suck or they're okay? It doesn't mean anything. It's just, oh, just right. a fact. I don't have a problem huh. yet. I was looking for a problem, and, and if there became a problem, I could have moved some people into different groups to get them there, but that hasn't happened yet. As I said, the, um, the 92 of the Perdomo 30th anniversary sun-grown Epicure comes in first at a 92, followed by Bandolero Picaro at a 91.28. Followed by McAuliffe Black. Wow. At a 90.83. Those are the, the top three highest scoring ratings 
Now, I told you B gave the highest ratings. Who gave the lowest ratings? Uh, let's go with C. D. B. Oh, really? Also. Huh. Isn't that interesting? They also gave the lowest five scores of any group. Um, hmm. and, uh, they might suck. Or not. Or not. Or they're right on. Then it's not a problem. Believe me, I'm mm-hmm. looking at it and seeing do we have a problem with the B group. And uh, just interesting, this, at the end of the year, we'll look at it again. Uh, at the end of the calendar, not calendar year, but of, the, of a full year with them. Um, the average strength of all the cigars that went out, I guess came in properly, as you would think the average should be, 5.33. So five should be the average, right? Right, but what was the range on? Very tight yes. range, right? Yeah. Uh, and is there any common flavor notes that uh, is used more than others that people are oh, saying? I bet flavor? there's a lot of coffee and chocolate in there. That co- chocolate is number one and coffee is number two. Yeah. Is that all from Group B? Are they, are nope, they messing nope. that up? No. And uh, cedar wood becomes third and pepper becomes fourth. But there's lots of flavor notes. Again, they have a wheel also. Mm-hmm. And, they, and they can... Go outside the wheel if, if there's a flavor note or, or anything, but having that is where your, your mind ends up going. No, also, they've never smoked cigars together, and that's what I'd like to get down the road mm. is maybe uh, a annual at least Zoom call where we all get together and smoke a cigar together and, and whatever, do something. So uh, that's the information of the past. I have every single uh, score. Uh, Dan watches this like a, a crazy man of the stats. He gave me all kinds of graphs and stuff, and I go, I think we're good with the, with the graphs uh, right now. But, you didn't uh, want to put those up on the screen? No. Well, we have some. No, the, no he, I, he doesn't want to. I don't think there's okay. a need to it. But right now it's time for the confessional, and that's brought to you by All Saints Cigars. It's time for the confessional. Brought to you by All Saints Cigars, featuring the All Saints St. Francis. Voted the 2021 Cigar of the Year. All Saints Cigars. In the name of the Churchill, Toro, and Robusto. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. And how long has it been, my son, since your last St. Francis uh, uh, <clears throat> confession? It's been one week since my last confession. And what is it that you have to confess today, my son? And the following message was submitted through the Contact Us page of thecigarauthority.com. And Anani Moose writes, A few years ago, I went on a cruise, and during a port call in Mexico, I bought four Cuban cigars. Flags. Did you? Did you, did you really? <laughs> flags should have been raised when the tobacconist, and that word is in quotes, went from $30 to Five dollars per cigar, huh. with very little negotiating. Yeah, but hey, they were Cubans, right? I was so happy and immediately went to smoke one of the cigars when I got back to the ship. The first one was not bad, but the next day when I smoked the second, damn, it felt like I was smoking ammonia from a litter box. Then I saw the holes and the larva moving around. Hmm. Needless to say, those cigars went in the trash. What should my penance be besides wasting twenty dollars? And if this was while you're a listener of the Cigar Authority, it should be very bad. Mm. Very, he should have known better. Well, imagine but, if he put those cigars in his humidor at uh, home, wiped out. I mean, he's, I can't believe it still works. That these guys on the beaches and stuff, mm-hmm. and let me tell you the a little fake secret: Cuban thing still works. If you're in Mexico. 99.999% of the cigars that are available for purchase are Mexican cigars. Yes. It doesn't matter what the label says. They're Mexican. And the, Guess the rest what? of them are Zimbabwe, right? If you go to the Dominican Republic, it's the same thing. And yes. it's the same thing in Nicaragua. It's the same thing in all cigar-producing countries. It's against the law. For them to import no, cigars. that's not true. That is true. That is not true. They can't just import them like that. They, ha- they have to be in special duty-free areas. It has to be certain, uh, certain shops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You, can't just, you can't just be a, um, open a cigar store in Nicaragua and just start bringing cigars in from the New World or from Cuba. Hmm. All right. 
Well, I think he learned his lesson. I don't know if we got to be too harsh. <laughs> uh, well, once again, if he if he's an avid listener of it, it should be very harsh. But well, we don't know. We don't know the answer. So to we'll that. split the difference. All right. All right. Oh, for the lo- who and wh- who does that? For your penance, smoke two Churchills, three Robustos, all Saint cigars this week, and you'll be happier. It's better than any Cuban cigar. You'll be happier. Hundred percent true. Next week on the show, a uh, first time appearance here. Uh, we have um, Brandon from Big Sky Cigars. Mm. Little company, but a big name, Big Sky. Big Sky. Uh, and uh, we've had some of their cigars uh, before, and we'll smoke another one with Brandon and learn a little about Big Sky cigars. Uh, up and coming uh, for sure, and we'll see where that goes. The following week, uh, we're into March, and survey says we're going to finally get to our 2023 survey, that we 2024 survey. And uh, give you uh, all the answers of uh, what our listeners, and we'll learn a lot about them. Uh, and on that same very show, March 2nd, uh, we will announce the New England Cigar Expo. Although we're doing a press conference beforehand, right? Yeah, I believe that's February 27th at okay. 7 p.m. Eastern. Okay, press conference um, on the 27th, you said? February 27th. February 27th. 7 p.m. 7 Eastern. p.m. The Cigar Authority goes live uh, for a short, uh, well, I say short, but they end up dragging out, uh, uh, press conference about the expo. So I guess we'll talk about the expo because that'll be days before uh, we mm-hmm. heard about it. So uh, we got uh, March 9th. We have Steve Saka joining us. It's been a long time. Uh, well, Is but he a year really? Or so. He'll be here. He'll be wow. here. So you got a time to get. Call in sick or whatever you want to do, or you think? show up and take take it like a man. Yeah, take it like a man. I'm not afraid of him. I think he's going to tell us the, all the wrong answers to the questions of the week. Maybe. Yeah, well, we'll let him answer the question of the week. Yeah, why is that relevant on the hot seat? I'm the one who gives the answers most of the yeah, time. Yeah, we do. Okay, yeah. all right. So those are up and coming shows. Uh, you should have put down all your flavor notes on your second cigar. Uh, second, third. Second, third uh, by now. So you should be going into your third, third and start talking uh, or thinking about that. But uh, this week's star review, Ed Sullivan has it. I do. And these are uh, from a group of, um, is it 10 or 20? It's 10, right? 10, yes, 10. Yeah. Uh, 10 reviewers, and then we get all their reviews, and we squish them together. And we come up with um, the flavor notes and the, the ratings and yeah. the reviews. This is our C group. C group. Yeah, okay. not this that. This is a good one. Not bad B group. Right. That B for bad. We're not sure. We're keeping an eye on B. We yeah, we're looking at them. So it might be the best of all. I don't know. B, well, B could stand, stand for, for best. best. Yeah. yeah. You know, the, the home run hitter <clears throat> that hits the most home runs, he strikes mm-hmm. out the most too. That was so Babe it's Ruth. highs and yeah. low, right? Sure. So all right. They're trying. Well, this week's review was the Yaya Robusto. Okay. And this is a cigar with an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper and Dominican fillers. Um, Delightful pepper kick to start on this. Okay. And notes of peanut butter and charred meat. Interesting combination. Well, I'm thinking maybe those, you know, sticks with the peanut butter sauce that you can dip them into. You got the, the Chinese with the with the mm, peanut sauce. Peanut sauce. Uh, it's good. It right? is good. It's really good. You wouldn't think those. I get nervous any time he starts calling out any nationalities. <laughs> As you were. It. All right, I'll keep moving <laughs> along. Uh, the charred meat and pepper persists and eventually as we get into the final third, people are noting some rye. Ah. On the finish. This one overall was scored at 89.85. All right. And overall strength, 4.42. I can ascribe to that. You, you can? think? Yeah. That's can you six. subscribe to it? <laughs> six. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I know I saw a Cigar Pulpit post that, yeah. He was a bit higher than what that 4.42 All right, said. because it was, and he's right. I'm right, you're wrong. There we go. There's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> All right, so that is this week's review, and that comes every Thursday. Thursday at every noon, Thursday I is believe. Noon. So, uh, and that is C, so next week will be D's review. Mm-hmm. We'll end up showing up, and we just keep A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. Wow. Okay. There's a pattern. There's a pattern. So you're saying... 
I should have did it. I want to be one of these cigar reviewers. Well, it's already filled up, uh, and there is no place for that. But you can go on the Cigar Authority dot com and you're going to see you want to be a cigar review when you click on and it takes you over to two guys cigars.com where you'll notice it's sold out but if you click next to it it'll say notify me and the notify me button is interesting because if somebody gets out and they get to get out anytime they want they don't have to wait till the end of the month or, or anything they can quit whenever they want to quit they don't typically quit but when every once in a while somebody gets out Everybody gets notified at that point, and then whoever wants to get in at that point buys before somebody else. Hmm. So get in that group if you want to get notified, or maybe someday you get in that group and someday we say, you know what, let's move it up from 10 people in the group to 12 people in the group, and we add 8 people, or we add 10 people, or who knows what we end up doing. But your price is $20 per month added to your care package. Oh, but I'm not a care package member then you can't be in. This is just for care package people only. Uh, you can be in either care package that's there, and the care packages, if you're not part of care packages, what are you doing? You're missing out. Yeah, you, you should be part of care packages. I heard that some people have, have got out of the care package to see what else was out there. And they said, there's other things. Let me see what, what's out there as other care packages or whatever they call them, Cigar mm -hmm. of the Month clubs and different like things. And then after a short time, they come back. And it's okay to do that. Go out there, see what the other people have to offer. If there's somebody better, I want to know. Because, you know, just on this alone, of the numbers I just uh, said to you, uh, how do we do it? Give $33 worth of cigars for $20. Volume. You're ridiculous. <laughs> No, we're doing it because it becomes part of the show. This is not a money-making thing to do. This is um, so we can have content to the show and uh, teach as we go along. It's, it's all good, uh, so we'll continue to do it till uh, we can't. So, all right, we're at, at the end of the hour, and I have the answers to everything. But before you do that, you, you want yes. to go over some flavor notes here? Yes. So everybody, hopefully you put your, your, your last one down, and this is not going to skew you at all. Uh, but you, you got to put down you, a rating number, a score, what you think of the cigar. You could put down the country of origin if you wanted to. You can put down the brand if you think you know what the brand is. This is the fun part of it, but it has nothing to do with the reviewing of it. But um, Jonathan's scratching his thing out. And, uh, yeah, country of origin or whatever, and let's talk flavor notes. So. All right, so the cold draw... And what often happens to me on a cold draw is uh, that's the place where I'm trying to detect the very first part of the age of the tobacco. So the deeper into barnyard that we get, the more present ammonia is and the less that tobacco has been worked. So the very first flavor that I get on this one was floral and then I got hay. So right away I'm thinking to myself, this is probably a higher end cigar that has some age on the tobacco because we're not deep into the barnyard flavor, because if you've ever been in a barnyard, you can smell the ammonia. But hay is a different aroma altogether. And hay is often one of the flavor notes I get on a cold draw when the tobacco has been worked. Also raisins sometimes, or figs. Yeah. But floral and hay is what I got. What are you doing? Oh, I thought you were gonna say what you got. No? No, no. All right. Do you're not I, feeling good enough to I, do play this game. I got a little honey cough drop throughout oh, the entire very good. thing. Very yes. good. Yeah. All I, right. I don't know how I missed that. I'm yeah, yeah. Because you down. didn't have one. <laughs> uh, first third, I got some uh, white pepper. And I know Skip sometimes has a problem with the, the term white pepper. Can you really tell the difference? But yes, you can. It's not as aggressive on the palate. I got some hints of vegetal and a little bit of milk chocolate that mostly at the end of that third that that came in. Was it good milk chocolate or Hershey's? No, no, it was, it was high in milk chocolate. All right. uh, then the second third, white pepper. It's prevalent through the entire cigar for me. And then a combination of milk and white chocolate going back and forth, a little creaminess there. And then the final third, white pepper is the first flavor, malted milk balls, and a very lightly, and I mean lightly, salted pretzel stick. All right. Mm. 
Is anybody uh, guessing brands or anything? I see Dominican that's up here. Would you guess the country? What country would you say? Nicaraguan. This is Nicaraguan. It's, if it's not all Nicaraguan, it's predominantly Nicaraguan is what, I, what it tastes like to me. All I've right. been wrong before. I'm not afraid to be wrong. Yep. Don't, and and uh, I, I would normally say there's not a right answer or a wrong answer. There isn't on your flavor notes, but there is a wrong answer of guessing. The uh, wrong cigar. The wrong cigar, the wrong country, the wrong, wrong. tobacco. Right. Uh, you know, what, what kind of tobacco? I mean, this is now you want to get deeper. You want to guess on c- kinds of tobacco that's being used here? I'm fairly confident that it is not Aganorsa tobacco. So that leaves Placencia, really. Uh, if somebody's buying tobacco, it leaves A.J. Fernandez. And I think it tastes more like an A.J. product than it does Nicaraguan A.J. Fernandez tobacco made in Nicaragua. Made in, that I, doesn't matter where it's made. No, but I think, I, think it's, I think it's an A.J. product. Oh, really? That's what I think. All right. And everybody else, put your answers down because I'm about to say what it is. How much for the cigar? I think it's in excess of fifteen dollars. In excess of fifteen dollars, maybe as much as twenty. But and would you like to say the answer to what you think it is? I think that it is the Diamante, the Monte new, Cristo, the Mo- new Monte Cristo, Monte Cristo Diamante, which is up there in prices, there. in excess of twenty dollars, I believe, mm. uh, is there. Um, it it um, happily. <laughs> <laughs> that Jonathan is 100% wrong. Awesome. Uh, it is not Nicaragua, made in Nicaragua. It does, uses no Nicaraguan tobacco. Perfect. Um, at all. Um, and it's funny that he had all these things and he scratched them off as, as he went on because he started looking at different, um, at the, the appearance of it and all these different things. Would it surprise you to know that this is made in Honduras? You're splitting hairs, the difference between Honduran tobacco and Nicaragua tobacco, but okay. Would it surprise you to know it's 100% authentic Corojo grown in Honduras? Okay. That is the Aladino Corojo box press from the cigar bar Ah, that came out. All right. And that the cigar was ten dollars a piece. It was twenty nine ninety nine for a three pack, so it's a it's less than half your price. Yeah, one fifty nine ninety nine for a box of six uh, bars, which is eighteen cigars, which brings it down to eight dollars and eighty five cents. And because I was going to say this, we took them out of the treasure chest and we put them available to be sold. If somebody wants to grab a grab a bar or two or a pack or whatever, and you can go to twoguyscigars.com and in the search, you'll uh, search cigar bar that it's usually nothing there because you're not going to find it uh, anywhere else. You can search cigar bar. Boom, there it is that popped up, and you can actually buy it and try it again if you want. Um, which so maybe I should have did too, so that the people could have. Uh, but they would have freaked out because they would have got they they got two. Blind, blind cigars, and they go, oh, blind. whatever. But it, it has to do with the show. It, we, I mean, we, we removed the bands. We didn't buy naked cigars. We removed the bands. It was extra work for us to give it to so you. So the very first guest that I had written down before anything, before cutting lighting, yes. I wrote down Aladino Maduro. And yes, the reason did. I did is the cigar bar wasn't on my radar. So, yes, I was playing the man, but yes. I also, one of the things that I do when we're doing blind tastings, besides just tasting the tobacco – is you look at your wrapper color. So there are Aladino Maduros that come in right around this hue when they're on the lighter spectrum. If this was round, you would have got it. Of be, course, but be, this, the, this was the way around him. The floral actually was a bit of a hint because their cigars tend to have that floral component, uh, very similar to older Cuban cigars, uh, because that's the same seed strain. Well, as soon as I took the cold draw, I... I said to myself, oh, shit, he's going to get this in one second when you took the cold draw, and you didn't. So I was like, okay, I got past that, because even before lighting it. But the, the, the size is what, what yes. tipped me off, because there's only maybe three cigars in the entire shop downstairs that have this size and this shape of box press. Because we don't have this in the store. Diamante's one. Yeah. 
Aladino is the other. Yeah, you're playing the playing an aging room, on, which yeah. is aging room and Diamante are made using the same molds, so they're the same. And that's size. what I don't want people to do is start walking around looking for the cigar. I want you to go by your taste, and if you did go by your, your flavor note, period, that's it. You would have got it, but you were playing the cigar itself of there, which is good that you you saw what he did wrong. Right? <laughs> learn from his mistakes. You don't have to make the mistakes yourself. We learn why from is his it a, mistakes. Why is it I've a mistake? spent my whole life like that. That's why, why, why is it a mistake? I tasted uh. what I tasted. No, because you would have got it. If you concentrated on your flavor and not tried to play, oh, I know this size. There's only three cigars that could possibly right. be. Yeah, don't do that, right? You, you threw me a curveball. I threw you a curveball. I like and, it. And you went for it, but that's the answer. That is Aladino uh, Corojo box pressed. It does not exist other than those cigar bars, uh, and they, they stopped making them. That was a one-time thing. Uh, we saved a bunch. If, if you want to get some, by all means, get it. But that is it for the hour. So let's move on. When we come back, I want to talk about new cigars. This is a new year, and usually we're talking about this in, like, October, when these new things are coming in, but, but the trade show is coming up next month, and we're getting information, and we're actually getting cigars coming in already. It's a whole new year, and whole new different cigars coming in. It's exciting to me. I'm happy to see it. New cigars already announced for 2024. We are live in the Toscano Soundstage, and you are listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Are you a member of the Cigar Authority Care Package? Well, if not, my friend, the time is now. For just $29.99, you get four premium cigars delivered to your door each month. And we'll smoke those cigars along with you during the show. Is that really a benefit? I think it is. We will judge the construction, flavor, strength, and review the cigars, and you'll see how right or wrong we really are. You might be surprised. Four premium cigars delivered to you for just $29.99, and you can quit any time, but you won't. The value is incredible. Want to take the Cigar Authority Care Package to the next level? Sign up or upgrade to the Cigar Authority Care Package Prime. For just $5 more, you get an extra cigar and usually something special. That's five cigars each month, all different. Find the Cigar Authority Care Package on thecigarauthority.com and sign up now. That's the Cigar Authority Care Package. Aging Room 4 Nicaragua Maestro. Named Cigar Aficionado's number one cigar of the year with a 96 rating, is a complex Nicaraguan puro carefully blended by Rafael Nodal and made by A.J. Fernandez. As Cigar Aficionado described it, every puff is an overture of flavors that's at times heavy and rich with notes of dark chocolate and wood, and other times subtle and understated with hints of fine caramel and toasted almonds. Treat yourself to an aging Room 4 Nicaragua today. Surgeon General warning, tobacco smoke increases the risk of lung cancer and heart disease even in non-smokers. You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world, from exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations of cigar science basics this is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast or better yet passionado cigar journal covers cigars in the u.s and around the world and is printed right here in the usa you owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine cigar journal available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website cigarjournal.com that's cigar journal Dot com. Hi, this is Rocky Patel, and believe it or not, I am 62 years old. Well, to celebrate my 60th birthday, we wanted to come up with something really, really special. I went and looked at some of our oldest tobaccos that we'd grown in our farms from 2014 in Esteli, Nicaragua, and we found bales of fillers. 7th and 8th Priming Lijero. Just wonderful, rich, rich tobaccos. A dark, oily San Andreas wrapper. A great binder from Mexico. 
and then fillers from Jalapa and Esteli. This cigar is called the Rocky Patel 60th, looks like a dark chocolate and tastes like a dark chocolate. It's got layers and layers of coffee, espresso, lingering spice. Uh, it is rich and decadent. You're gonna try one and you're gonna fall in love. This cigar got the number two cigar of the year in Cigar Aficionado, rightly so. I hope you enjoy it. I love it and I promise you this cigar is going to deliver everything you enjoy in a fine cigar. Some say cigars are all the same. It's just not true. It's you I have to blame. Well, I don't know, because what I know there is a cigar called Aladino. Corojo. Aladino Corojo. Aladino Corojo. They say authentic, so we're not confused, while the others say it's a word that's just abused. I guess that's so, they can't compete. At least I'm sure Aladino can't be beat. Corojo. Aladino Corojo. Aladino Corojo. Aladino Cigars uses authentic Corojo tobacco from JRE Tobacco. This is the greatest commercial you ever heard. Yeah. This is Rafael Nodal from Agent Room Cigars and Tabacalera USA. You're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we are back, powered by the West Tampa Tobacco Company, featuring West Tampa Black, White, and Red. It's West Tampa Cigars, Passion with a Purpose. Yes, we are still arguing on there. Uh, <laughs> We're I, not arguing. I, I played play, a little dirty pool, but... Uh, I played them like a fiddle. Is it what was I really good. You did a phenomenal job with that. And I got to hand it to I you. Was, I was complaining uh, b- when the show opened up because here he was guessing without even tasting the cigar or anything, uh, Aging Room, which is the next cigar we're going to smoke because he figured, oh, I was going to yeah. give you one of them first and then we're going to smoke the thing, which didn't end up happening. He guessed Aladino Maduro yeah. uh, by the look of the cigar. I don't know what we got that because but, they, so they do it, make a box pressed. Yes. Yeah. The Maduro is boxed. Yeah. Uh, but then you crossed it out after you lit it. Because, because you, were- you said 100% wrong. I was not 100% wrong. I missed it by one leaf <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> without lighting it. Well, and then that's the... That- Listen, do anyway. not ever... Folks, I'm telling you this as a public <laughs> service announcement. If you ever have a chance to play poker with David Garofalo, just don't even put your chips on the table because he will take your money. He's a good poker player. Yeah, mm. it was good. It worked out uh, just fine. But I hope everybody learned something from that experiment of, of what to do and what not to do, which is... Yeah, don't eat cough drops. No, but don't eat cough <laughs> drops beforehand. Yeah, uh, yeah you know, uh, rinse your mouth out and... Uh, don't, not with soap either. Yeah, and, um, you know, maybe eat a, a, a cracker or something, you know, a, just a cracker or something to clean your, your palate to be able to end up... Uh, like a saltine, yeah, not, so not a Ritz. No, no, not no. a Ritz. Unsalted saltine. Yeah, would be ideal. All right, so we're going to light up the next cigar, and you can see exactly what it is. Everybody has this cigar because this is part of the Cigar Authority Care Package also. But you're going to taste different. If you went through this process now, you're going to actually taste this different, I promise you. Go ahead. Well, Dave, the second cigar that we're smoking is the Aging Room Quattro Vibrato Nicaragua. Is manufactured in Nicaragua by A.J. Fernandez for Aging Room Cigars. The size that we're smoking is a 6x54 box press. The other one was a 6x50. What's perfect about this is this is basically the cigar that he thinks the La Cigar was. I said to Ed Sullivan that it, that part was doubtful because of how thick it is. And Ed Sullivan yeah. can attest but to that. But you said A.J. Fernandez, Nicaraguan tobacco. Mm-hmm. Basically this cigar. I was leaning toward the Diamante. Okay. 
Uh, it is wrapped in a Nicaraguan wrapper. It is bound by Nicaraguan tobacco, and it is filled with Nicaraguan tobacco, making it a Nicaraguan Puro. It is part of the Cigar Authority Care Package Prime. A single cigar is thirteen thirty nine, and a box of twenty is two thirty eight ninety nine, dropping the single price down to just eleven dollars and ninety five cents on twoguyscigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick and mortar retailer that carries it, try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two guys cigars. Dot com. All right, so from a Honduran Corojo, all Nicaraguan Puro, all Honduran Corojo, Corojo Puro, Puro, to an all Nicaraguan Puro, there should be dramatic differences on the cold draw. Everything should be different. We'll go through that. Right now, it's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. Okay. A little cold draw there. Oh, Ed Sullivan can't participate. A little bit of honey. <laughs> There's a... Lozenge, a little... Mm, menthol. Yeah. <laughs> a little barnyard. Has a little, little bit of a chew to it. A little raisiny. A little raisin. You're eating a raisin in a barnyard. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. We're going to light our cigar today with the Oculus by Vertigo. The Oculus by Vertigo features a cigar rest in the top and double action. You flip the top. You pull the button down, and three jets come alive, fueled by the patented Vertigo big-ass tank. At the bottom... Only one action happens. You have a flip-out bullet punch and easy adjustment, all for the low price of $29.99. That is the Oculus by Vertigo. Brand new. On sale at finer brick-and-mortar stores right now. Yeah. We could have waited to the trade, Joe. Maybe got a deal, but I couldn't wait any longer. They didn't send us the one we wanted. I know. We want, we want this one, too. We like this one. I like, a, I like a lighter that has a rest in it. Mm. I do, too. I, I think know. That was a, no? What's wrong no. with that? Well, it, that's good. I usually have an ashtray or I hold my cigar. Why do I need a rest? Well, he has a rest built into his face. He does this all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can't hold a cigar. I can I can't hold a cigar but in my mouth. Don't you always have an ashtray? I like a rest. Yeah, but in in some cases, there's this. three or four people around, and they're all using the same ashtray. And I oh, just, if you're smoking cigars with Larry Labadini, and I know he listens to the oh, show, he just grabs, he grabs any, any cigar, cigar he doesn't and care. starts smoking it. Yeah, not if you put it on on your. Little if you cigar have it on rest. your own rest. But here we are again using the box press cigar with the round rest because there isn't a square rest on there that needs to be a It's square. a little limiting if you have a, a box pressed rest. There's, there's not huh? as many cigars that are box pressed well, as are own, round. You'll own the, 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 the industry market. on that. Yeah, you own the market on box pressed cigar rests because I haven't seen one. If the, if the folks in Vertigo are listening, you can have it because you've been very good to the Cigar Authority. Hmm. Take that, run with it, do what you will. The box pressed rest, and it could be a boxy type of cigar too, of, hmm. of lighter. And call Ooh. it, the, call yeah. it the box pressed, and and it's made specifically for jets because it wants to be square. Also, the jets are square too, and it's made for box pressed cigars to light, cut, and hold a box pressed cigar. Hmm. Huh? Yep. There's something know. here. The, you think? Hopefully, Alan, you can do something with the $10.50 <laughs> you're going to make on that idea. <laughs> uh, so last week, uh, we had Oliver Nouveau on. Uh, he launched the Cigar With No Name, formerly the Dragon Slayer. Uh, he mentioned the uh, Connecticut Firecracker oh, that yeah. was coming out. Um, I, I believe, did we, did we hold that off until? No, he mentioned that. The JFR Lunatic, and he, uh, he had to wait until the after show because the press release for the other one didn't come out until Wednesday. Do I dare say this? Am I supposed to say it? Well, I've lost track. The press release is out on the cigar, right? On the, on the last one that I have here, listed here? 
If it's the one I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. So we have United Natural, and uh, on Wednesday, the after show, he mentioned Gold Star. So the Gold Star Cigar, which is a limited release that's coming out, uh, and there'll be a regular Gold Star line that will follow later in the year, is for Gold Star families of Navy SEALs. And they are going to be auctioning off the whatever he's given them, 25 boxes of cigars, and they'll be signed by a whole bunch of Navy SEALs, and they're going to use it as auctioning. And we've done already a few different uh, things for the Navy SEALs. So this conversation happened more than a year ago, and they said, is there something that could be done with a cigar for um, um, gold member families of the fallen Navy SEALs? And I said, oh, my God, that you're asking me this question. I said, it's amazing that you're asking me this question because I happen to have the trademark of Gold Star Cigars. Mm -hmm. And it's been, you know, we, we used it on cheaper cigars over the years and stuff, but to redo it, which all of us looking at all the old stuff and says, I want to redo it and stuff, he goes to work on that immediately. And here we have the limited release that's coming out for that. And then the regular version, which will be hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have a regular version of it. But this one will be available to be seen uh, and sold um, at the PCA trade show. Um, I saw pictures. Uh, I smoked naked cigars of it, and I saw pictures of it with the bands on it, but what we don't have is the box, uh, right. that the boxes are being made, and they promise they'll be at the trade show, but we don't have it in our hand yet. But we're talking about new cigars that are coming out, so there's a bunch of them that Oliver mentioned, and we're able to talk about at this point. Aladino, who uh, we just smoked an Aladino Corojo cigar, is coming out with a Candela it Toro. It and it has landed. It has landed. Candela Toro. Uh, not the greatest thing, but this time of year. Um, if anybody should do a Candela, it should be Aladino because um, Candela is how that family started. Yeah, Julio was Who, the king of Candela. Yeah, I mean, back in the day, in the, in the 70s and 80s, he grew more Candela tobacco than anybody in the world. Uh, and if somebody can do it, he's the one that can do it. Candela Toro. You have it on the shelf? Yeah. People buying it? Or? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, it's good. Yeah? I, I didn't even smoke it. The Toro, I, I liked the Panatella size a little bit better, only because you could smoke that all the way through, and maybe you want another one. The Toro size, by the time you get to the end of it, you are candela out for the day. So I, I'm not smoking two of them. Okay. But once a week, I right. one up, I get the craving while it's in stock. And what's the deal with that? Is that just a one and done, or it's going to keep going? No, he he does a limited run of those every year. Yeah, yeah. okay. Padron Black, Maduro, hmm. PB ninety seven, peanut butter. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know any. It not didn't come in. No, that I don't have yet. Okay, Tiamo. That's landed. All right, Tiamo. Boy, do I have a history of Tiamo. Tiamo, when I opened in 1985, was the number one, by far, selling cigar uh, that there was in the Northeast. Not around the whole country, but the Northeast, mm -hmm. by far, was the biggest. Um, you, if you went through New York and Pennsylvania, uh, the storefronts all said Tiamo on them. They had a big sign thing that they'd make signs for your store and things you like that. You were a Tiamo that. store that also sold other cigars. Correct. Right. Uh, maybe that uh, Fuente Padron collab will be at PCA. Uh, that's not it'll listed be, down here. It'll be there at PCA. Yeah, yeah. But will it, it can't be, at, be shipped. Will it be at my store is the question. No. I, no. I know that they carry it to that show for three years and they show it, but enough is enough with that. Um, but um, it, it's nice seeing these things. They're already landing of, of the... Uh, uh, everybody was worried, are they going to have them ready for the trade show? Not only are they ready for the trade show, that they landed. They landed. Tiamo, and we're going to get to it on one of the shows, is the authentic San Andreas cigar. That is a Mexican Puro. And I never liked it, to be honest with you. I never liked what it tasted like. I liked how much it sold, that people went crazy for it. That was one of those cigars like a Padron that you could never brand switch that customer. They loved it. They loved that earthy taste, and nothing else tasted quite like it. It was as earthy as you could. Yeah. Like a handful of dirt in yeah. your mouth. 
Now the new it's a version. a hell of a sales pitch at yeah. Smithin. But the new I'm version on a is a shitload of these things. The new, new version, version is very different. Very different. So yeah. let's say the one I smoked was a refined cigar, which you would never say about the original. Yeah. Now what what has what has happened? It's still a Mexican puro. It's it's all San Andreas tobacco is a puro, but I think they have improved their Mexican tobacco so much over the years. That was always looked upon, like Ed says about Sumatra, that people used Mexican tobacco back in those days, but they hid it away. They would never tell anybody. They certainly didn't use a lot of it for wrapper. They would use it as binder. Macanudo used it as binder. Potagus used it as binder. I think Punch used it as binder. Steve Saka said to me once that the issue with Mexican San Andreas is that although they grow a great crop, that they're not great at the pre-industry on that tobacco. So if you move that tobacco to somebody that knows what they're doing... Ah, they buy raw tobacco. They buy it, and then they do... You know, it's been cured, but it hasn't been worked. They buy it, and they bring it to another country and work it in that fashion, and now you have usable tobacco. So I bet that's what happened. Well, I think they caught on because they did Tiamo right. I mean, I, Mm. I liked it. Although we... It was by far the biggest selling thing we mm-hmm. had. There was, it, there was no number two even close to, to what Tiama was. So uh, I was seeing that um, there was um, a rev- not a review, but there was a story in Cigar Aficionado. Yep. And, it, and it was kind of negative on the thing like uh, questioned if it's possible that this thing can make a comeback. Hmm. Um, I think so. I think so. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be an interesting thing of, of this, and uh, I'm a believer. We'll see how, it, how that goes. Right now, it's time for the Fave Five, and it's brought to you by McAuliffe Cigars. It's time for the McAuliffe Fave Five, brought to you by McAuliffe Cigars. Smoke five McAuliffe Cigars and be entered to win $300 in gift certificates weekly. That's five $50 gift certificates and an additional five $10 gift certificates for your friends. In December, all winners will be put back and entered to win the grand prize. A trip for two to next year's McAuliffe Open House in Texas. Simply go to McAuliffeCigars.com slash TCA for more information. That's McAuliffeCigars.com slash TCA. Top five answers are on the board. Name something people tend to fall out of. Answer. Love. Love is in second place. Really? People fall out of love in second place. They fall out of favor? No, no. answer. No, no favor. answer. Uh, how about an airplane? No, people, not a lot of people fall out of an airplane. A chair. A chair. A chair is number four. Chair is number four. Fall out of a chair. How, how about falling out of bed? Third, a moving, a moving vehicle. Car, number five. Nobody has number one yet. We have number five is a car. Number four is a chair. Number three is a bed. Number two is love. Fall out of number one. Anything? A tree. Fall out of a tree. Oh, like Keith Richards. <laughs> Keith Richards, the guy and the guy from um, the DeLorean movie. Mm-hmm. The, the guy fell out of a tree. Yeah. Right. People the, fall out of trees. I don't climb trees, but if you do, you could fall out of one. That's hmm. the answer. Okay, moving along. Uh, I just want to know where you're getting your information it's from. None of your business where I get the yeah, information exactly. from. It. It's, Somebody it's, thought a nursing home was where he was. <laughs> Cro-Magnon Sneak out Clovis. It. What do you know about that, Ed Sullivan? Cro-Magnon Clovis. Clovis. I don't know anything. That is the new Cro-Magnon. Oh, I know about that. All right. There we go. I know you're sickly right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think the uh, Clovis is the version that's like the Black Irish. So that one is the limited edition, but it's got the Pennsylvania broadleaf with the the little strips of the um, candela. Candela. All right. Uh, HVC 500 year anniversary short Toro. Wouldn't that That's be a up. robusto? You would think, but we're going to see how that huh. comes out. Christoph 20th anniversary cigar coming out. Christoph 20th anniversary. Wow. And we got more of them, but right now let's take a peek into the insane asylum. Brought to you by Asylum Cigars. It's time for news from the insane asylum. Odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true. 
or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars. Take no prisoners. Asylum Cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars with sizes ranging from 4 inches by 44 to the absolutely insane 8 inch by 80. Asylum Cigars. <laughs> A stolen Hofner bass guitar belonging to Paul McCartney and used to record mm-hmm. the True Beatles' story. first two albums have been found and returned after 51 years Wasn't following found. a global hunt. Huh. The guitar dubbed the most iconic lost musical instrument of all time by the team behind the search, the Lost Bass Project, was used in Beatles singles including the 1963 hits She Loves You and All My Lovin'. It's the bass that started Beatlemania, Nick Waz, one of the founders of the search team, told Reuters. As a result of the publicity, someone living in a terraced house in Hastings on the south coast of England contacted Paul McCartney's company and then returned the bass to them. The Lost Bass Project said the instrument was returned last year, but the fact was held from the public until this past Thursday. Paul was known by the other three Beatles as an ass man, but it turns out he's also all about that bass, and that's not only insane... That's Asylum. What? I want to know how much money they got for it. The guy that, that stole it yeah. died. And the grandson or the son called up and said, I want to return this. But he didn't get yeah. anything for it? I don't it? think so. He gave it, gave it back because it didn't belong to him. And he wasn't upset with his father or grandfather that stole it. And uh, I wonder how they did that or whatever. We don't know because we waited for the guy to die. But hmm. uh, returned to its rightful owner, which is Paul McCartney. And uh, I don't know. What, what do you do when the guy that stole it, the family that stole <laughs> it from you, gives it back? Do you do something nice for them? I no. think you just take I, it back. No, I, I think you should give the kid something. He didn't have to give it back. Yeah. It's I not guess. like he got caught or anything. Well, He's the doing... only way that that guitar has any real value is if it's authenticated. Mm-hmm. And once it's authenticated, then they know it's stolen. But right. it, se- it seems like this group is trying to say we located it when they had nothing to do with it at right. all. The person that did it. Look, I found it. Yeah. Well, they put, oh, we did. Look what they we did. put the publicity out there is what they're saying. Yeah, yes. yeah. People he found did. it. That I don't way. know. I think Paul McCartney could throw him a couple bucks. He's a billionaire. Yes, he could. Well, yeah. well, let's look into that. That'll give you something to do this week. Yeah, research uh, yeah, that. That's, what I, that's what I'm going to do with my spare time. All right, spare time. What is <laughs> I don't that? even like the Beatles. There we go. Uh, the after show immediately following this show, we're going to talk about, which will be very interesting to our audience, how to get thrown out of a cigar shop. You say, I've been thrown out of bars. I've been thrown out of the best places around. How do I get thrown out of a cigar shop? We're going to tell you. That's not how to do it, Kevin. T. <laughs> yeah. I like people giving me the finger. <laughs> We're going to tell you how to do it, uh, and if, oh, you wanna, yeah. if you want to stay away from things like that, you'll learn what not to do, but we're going to tell you how to do it, uh, uh, how to get thrown out I, of a I know some ways. All right, we're smoking the Aging Room Quattro Nicaraguan. Very, very different. This is an all-Nicaraguan. We had an all-Honduran cigar. Do you know what a zester is? Yep. So if you had a zester, and you had an orange, mm. maybe even a tangerine, and you zested that over a hermit... And then you took a bite right where that... You mean like a guy living in a shack? No, the hermit... No, the you know, oh, I mean, people oh, don't know what the hermit cookie is, which is a... It's a molasses cake, cakey cookie yeah. with raisins in it. It's the cheapest cookie it, to it make. Is. It tastes of disappointment. It does. I love it. I love it. He I grew comes, up with them. He comes in sometimes with bags but, of them. When I go into a bakery and I see it there, I put a smile on my face and I grab one. And then I give you the bag, but I want one... For myself, brings me back. He huh. pretends like there were only 11 in the bag. No, yeah. there were 12. He ate one and then resealed the bag. I uh, can count. And black pepper. You got black pepper out of this too, right? Uh, well, that's the orange zest. That, that flavor often gets confused with black pepper, but I'm more, it's more orangey than peppery. Very, very different than the blind cigar mm-hmm. that we smoked. Strength-wise, comparatively, this is three notches up. This is maybe a six or seven. And the other one you said was a five or four? Stand by. I have my notes here. You have your notes? I gave it no strength rating because you weren't going to the rating stuff. Okay. All right. Whatever. Maybe the other one's a five. This one's a six. Yeah, just one step above. I'd say it's It's a couple. 
Yeah, at I, least I'd a couple, give you a couple. Yeah, it's at least a couple, couple more in strength, which typically does happen I mean, to Nick. This cuts through more of the cough drop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You All can right. tell. Okay. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we got a prize to give away for the best email, email of the week, which I think we already heard, but he doesn't win. Um, plus, we have uh, more new cigars and a new segment. Uh, I don't see where the new segment is, but we have a new segment. Yeah. New intro to an old new, segment. Correct. New intro to an old segment. That's right. We did that last week. We're live in the Toscano Soundstage, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Introducing Blackened Cigars, M81 by Drew Estate. A dark, bold, and unapologetic cigar collaboration. My job is all about taste. So when James mentioned he wanted to create an exclusive cigar, I was stoked. Like Metallica, Drew Estate has some of the most hardcore fans out there. I've known Rob Dietrich for years. And when he approached me to collaborate on this, we couldn't be more excited. I mean, Metallica, Black and & Whiskey, and Drew Estate, what could be a better passion project? We all came up with the vision of what a blackened M81 cigar would look and taste like. M81, Metallica, formed in 1981, as you can see right here, just so I don't forget. <laughs> and now you won't forget because it's on this. We needed to craft a cigar unlike anything in our portfolio. One that would take cigar fans on the deepest, darkest, heaviest journey into the mystical world of Maduro. Full-bodied with notes of espresso, leather, and dark chocolate. A wrapper, a binder, a filler that is all Maduro, and they are all grown in separate places. You talk about a heavy leaf cigar. This is beyond passion. This shit is straight amplification. Black & Cigar M81 by Drew Estate is bold, rich, and powerful enough to satisfy the most experienced cigar connoisseur, but also balanced that new cigar lovers can enjoy its tantalizing smoking experience as well. Black & Cigars M81 by Drew Estate. Since 1989, Nestor and Mariana Miranda have subscribed to one family, one vision with Miami Cigar & Company. Since their inception, the Miranda family has fulfilled their dream by creating some of the best cigars on the market today. Cigars like Nestor Miranda Special Selection, which is produced in Nicaragua, featuring an oily Nicaraguan Habano wrapper that the Cigar Authority named their 2019 Cigar of the Year, and the Don Lino Africa, which celebrates Nestor's love of big game animals. These soft box-pressed cigars feature an authentic Cameroon binder which creates delicious nuances and crescendos. Miami Cigar invites you to try these brands at your favorite tobacconist. You only have one life. How will you live yours? Experience the rich tradition of the legendary H. Upman brand with the latest addition to their iconic 1844 line. The H. Upman 1844 Añejo uses a rich, well-balanced blend of Nicaraguan, Honduran, and Dominican tobaccos and an extra-aged wrapper that offers a deep aroma with a bold finish. The H. Upman 1844 Añejo is sure to please adult smokers looking for a delicious, handmade, premium smoke that is aged to perfection. Surgeon General warning, tobacco use increases the risk of infertility, stillbirth, and low birth weight. HVC, hot cakes. Anybody here want to smoke some hot cakes? Cakes, hot cakes. HVC's got cigars for sale. You can buy them in a single or a box of 25 HVC hotcakes. They really satisfy selling cakes. Hotcakes, you get them from the cigar man. He sells cigars, one or the other. If you smoke HVC, you'll never buy another selling cakes. Hotcakes, you get them from the cigar man. HVC hotcakes are premium cigars. Featuring a San Andreas Maduro wrapper, Nicaraguan Corojo binder grown in Jalapa, and Nicaraguan filler tobaccos, including a leaf of Corojo from 2006 Maduro, which makes this blend pop. Expect rich notes of dark chocolate, espresso, and spice. 
It's so friggin' good. Selling cakes, hot cakes, you get them from the cigar man. Hi, this is Steve Saka from Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust, and you're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we are back, powered by the West Tampa Tobacco Company, featuring West Tampa Black, White, and Red. It's West Tampa Cigars, Passion with a Purpose. And speaking of West Tampa Cigars, they have a new cigar coming out, and it is not white, black, red, so you would guess the next one would be a color. What color is it going to be? All I know is it's not going to be a color. No? Something else, and it's not going to be a color, and it'll be at the trade show, and... I was hoping to get it early. But we don't have it. We don't have it. Um, I think it's a packaging delay is mm. what we're holding up on. The cigars are ready to go. They're aging. Uh, the thing is, that they've, they've come off of so many winners in a row. W- what do you do? What's the next step? He knows his shit. Though. Oh, he knows his shit. Um, we have uh, McAuliffe coming out with a new cigar coming out. Is it a color? It is a color. Uh-huh. All right. So McAuliffe did McAuliffe Black, and they will come out with a next color. What color will that be? White. I have no idea. You think white? Would make sense. I think blue. Now, West Tampa came out with white first, then black, then mm. red. And McAuliffe comes out with black. I black know. and blue. Oh, I black like and blue. Know. That's the yeah. thing. Black and blue. That's like getting a punch in the face, right? Yeah, been there. Yeah? Been there. Got black and blue. Um, EPC is coming out with a new cigar, and that's going to be a color also. Really? This is going to be the year of the colored cigars. What color like will that, that be? I don't like that turn of phrase. No? <laughs> <laughs> what color will that be? What, EPC? Yeah. Green. What do you think? I have the answer. Uh yeah, I guess I'll go. They like green. green. Black. Ugh. EPC Encore Black. There's too much black. Yeah? Well, everybody's using it now. McAuliffe Black, West Tampa Black, EPC, but even Drew Estate Blackened. It's and um, 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 not Alfonso, Atabe Black. Mm. Right? They came out with mm-hmm. Atabe Black, too, which there's another release coming. Um, A color? No, there's another um, release of the Atabay Black hmm. en route, I would say, just weeks away. A few weeks away if you're really into that. Um, Three Leaf by Eric Wentworth. What color is that? Arrive. Um, it's not a color. It's, the brand is called Three Leaf, right? Three the leaf, company yeah. is called Three Leaf hmm. also. Uh, but Eric Wentworth, if you don't remember Eric, Eric was uh, in charge of Hammer and Sickle after... Eric Hansen passed away. It was Eric Wentworth after that, and um, they gave up Hammer and Sickle Cigars, and you think he disappeared, but not this industry. It's always the case. They go into the industry with the exception of Mike Cusano. They come back in, and here he is with a uh, cigar, two versions of a Habano and a Connecticut, and it's called Three Leaf, and it just arrived. We have it in the store now. But speaking of Hammer and Sickle, uh, we told you last week of the Hermitage cigar that's out there. Uh, I, I expected them all to be gone at that kind of deal, but they're not. There, there were hundreds of boxes, but um, the deal continues. And by- for the record, people misheard somehow last week. You put these aside. These were not found. You put them aside because you didn't realize initially that there was a Hammer and Sickle logo on the back of that band. Correct. And then... At the point that you realized it was too late, the deal had already been run on the other cigars. This was the one I was going to keep going because I said, okay, this is Hermitage. It doesn't say Hammer and Sickle. It doesn't say it on the box. There's no Hammer and Sickle logo on the box either. I said, I think I'm okay. But if you turn the band around, you'll see the Hammer and Sickle logo yeah. on, the, on the little thing. And I go, ah, all right, um, let it go. And um, there's a whole bunch of bundled ones if you remember that box it's a leather box where the bundle fit in because they would assemble right. in new hampshire that's where they assembled the cigar it would come in in bundle form by the way a lot of cigars that happens to you say oh you know maybe lower end cigars davidoff comes in and it's assembled in florida padrone come in and they're assembled in florida so uh they they take them in and it's one la- one last 
um, inspection inspection that can happen. So the same thing that um, they were doing at Hammer and Sickle, the scars would come in and then put inside the box at that point and look. Um, there's three sizes. The Robusto is a 5x52, box of 20, 159. The Toro is a 6x54, uh, box of 20, 179, and the Churchill is a 7 by 56, box of 20, 199. And what we're doing is, is you're buying a box and we're giving you 20 cigars free along with that. Uh, will that come in a box? Possibly or possibly not uh, because there was more bundles than there were full boxes. But if it's, a full, if it's a full box, it's a full box. I'm just not promising you. Also, we're not promising you that your box that you buy is not going to be the same size of the ones you get for free. We're not going to mix it up, but it'll, if you order Robustos, it's possible you get Churchill's or the other way around. Mm -hmm. You just don't know because uh, we don't know. And uh, that's still available on twoguyscigars.com. You'll see it at the, at the header at the top, Hermitage Cigars. Um, and uh, buy them while you can if you're interested in a great deal because that cigar comes down to... Four dollars per cigar. It's hard to get a four dollar mm. cigar, especially aged for a few years that, that are there. Um, these are the original packaging of the original ones that had come out because later that cigar went into a different box of the one we sold. But I thought I'd keep that going, but because of the hammer and sickle that's on the back of it, I said, "All right, let it go, and we can be done with it and move on and decide what we're going to do from there." That being said, right now we have a prize to give away. It's the best email of the week, and it's brought to you by the folks uh, at Onyx Onyx Cigars this week. Yeah, and uh, they're giving away a koozie, a hat, a money clip, a lighter, and a cutter. Nice. The following message was submitted through the Contact Us page of the CigarAuthority.com. And Carter writes, these guys won't let this go. You have let it go. Okay. The, the, the listeners, they've not let it go. Good Maybe afternoon. I'll let it go back. I'll get back into it. We'll see if they <laughs> God, I hope not. Uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. I heard Dave a few weeks ago and on the most recent after show talking about how the legalization of weed is hurting the premium <laughs> cigar market. I live in Michigan where weed has been legal for recreational use, and I spend my weekends in Ontario, Canada for hockey games where weed is legal federally. Is that true? In Canada? Fed all of Canada, mm. weed is legal? Yeah, but they don't I like I thought it was just certain provinces, but maybe it's gone the whole country. Wow, I thought just the opposite. I, think, I thought if you got caught with weed or something, you weren't ba allowed back into the country. Do you well, remember we had an employee that was... Maybe in the 80s or the 90s, but now it's gone the other way, it looks like. Uh, now, I only agree with maybe 50% of the shit that Mr. J says, but I 100% agree with Mr. J that weed is not negatively affecting the premium cigar market. People who smoke premium cigars won't substitute a premium cigar for a weed product. Now, I'm sure many smokers use I, both I agree, weed. but they won't go the opposite way. They won't... If they're smoking weed, they're not going to say, let me smoke a cigar instead. No shit. A cigar doesn't get you high. Right. Okay. Mm. But he's saying the other way around. Of course. I don't all understand right. what you're saying at all. all. Right. You should do. Uh, I'm sure many smokers use both weed and premium cigars, but no one is smoking weed instead of a cigar. I think Dave is dead wrong for thinking that weed is affecting the sale dead of wrong. premium cigars. Oof. Love the show. And 100%. Listen to you, guys. You, you disagree 100%. There's not, there's not one person that said, I think I'll go smoke a cigar. And the guy says, uh, I got some weed. You uh, want to do that instead? I'm, yes. sure, I'm sure there's no, one. but Not one person has ever said, I'm going to smoke weed instead. instead of a cigar. They would smoke it in addition. Wow. The, the weed, weed smoking, weed is so strong right now. You take two hits and you um, are done. Jonathan, now I, you on vacation, I was thinking, I might just... Stop smoking cigars and spend a thousand a month on weed. You don't have to spend a thousand a month. No, no, you didn't. Why not? The following message was submitted through. So, the what was that guy's page. name that's going to lose anyway? <laughs> Carter. Carter. <laughs> uh, Dead wrong. Hundred percent. Dead wrong. Jr. from Canada writes, "Dear Cigar Authority, after hearing Mr. Jonathan extol the virtues of Aladino." Aladino Corojo. Hold on, this guy's from Canada. Can he win? They have legalized marijuana and we don't ship to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I don't know if he can win it. Okay. All right. Is it okay if I continue the read? I don't know. I was going to try to stop you if there was no way he could win. What's the sense of that? But go ahead. (laughs) (sighs) The virtues of Aladino Corojo Reserva cigars for what seems like forever. Corojo. I recently (laughs) discovered that I could not obtain this brand in my country. However, there are several other JRE tobacco products available at my local brick and mortar as well as through an online competitor. Wow. The problem is knowing which brands to pick. This leads me to a potential show idea. Can you gift your listeners a deep dive episode into the cigars of Aladino? Mm. The Corojo Puro Robusto was out of stock, so I purchased the Puro Palma and the Corojo Toro, which contains Corojo and Criollo filler, so it's not a true Puro, which I don't believe that's the case. The Corojo version is all Corojo yep. from mm-hmm. Aladino. Mm-hmm. Uh, then there's the Vintage. Which we just smoked in the first hour, 100% Corojo, right? Correct. And the Maduro. And he goes on and on listing the rest of them. We don't need to do it. But the idea was to do a deep dive into Aladino cigars. And maybe the next time Justo's here, yeah, we could do pick that. One of the, he has so many now at this point. So, okay, let's talk about this a one. A lot going one. on. First hour, we can have three. The second hour, we can do three more. Just Look. go back and forth. Yeah. Six cigar episodes. Yeah. Sure. Remember when we used to do the Cigar of the Year contenders? We all would of smoke them. all of them. <laughs> that was brutal. And it would be eight, nine cigars in, in uh, two hours. Don't do this at home, folks. We're professionals. No, we're not. All right. Brian writes through the Contact Us page of the CigarAuthority.com. <clears throat> Dear gentlemen of the Cigar Authority, I've been listening to you guys for about two years now, and I've learned a great deal about cigars that even my 15 or so years of smoking didn't teach me. <laughs> I've enjoyed the information over the years, but more importantly, I love listening to you guys go back and forth with the friendly, insulting, roasting, and straight-up fuck-off moments. As a professional asshole myself, I find it entertaining. With that, I have a show segment idea. How about a roasting segment where you, the authority, take a live roasting from either a live studio audience or from the chat section of the show. It happens every week. Or even my email. <laughs> you want me to read some of this shit? I, it's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> I think it would be a fun, slightly off-subject idea right before the second cigar of the show for about five minutes or so. Uh, P.S. Mr. J., my friends and I love your impeccable description of the first draw of each cigar, and we have all started to do our own version of what you do. That's good. Yeah. I'm voting for the first one because he said Dave is dead there's, wrong. There's one other P.S. Instead of boners for the cigar review, I think... It's not. It's I not. I think butt plugs is a great idea for the name Brothers United in Tasting Tobacco plus Ladies Ultimately Guessing Stogies. The and butt plug I thought was good. <laughs> we never had that, that they brought butt plug up as... There was a lot of bad ones, was, including boners, but mm-hmm. it's stars. Why is boners bad? You don't even know what it stands for. It doesn't matter what it stands for. It's awesome. It's terrible. Terrible. It's terrible. Uh, I say Brian, the, the last guy. Uh, there's some good stuff there, uh, and we don't have to worry about Canada, and I'm not 100% wrong. You're telling me not one person? <laughs> no, you're person, dead wrong. 100% wrong is, is... He said dead wrong. There is nobody... Not smoking a cigar because they smoked marijuana. There is nobody doing that. One hundred percent. One thousand percent. Wow. The person that's that's smoking. If you're out there, relax. if you're out there, person who smokes marijuana, you have a cigar in front of you. And you say, nope, nope. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit this joint instead. I want to hear from you. Hey, I want to. And go, when we don't hear, I we'll go, know it's them. I need to relax. And they go and they and they smoke marijuana because they want to relax. Now they've accomplished the relaxation thing because that's why they did it, right? If that's what it does. What do you do for the three then, hours the high is going on? You've got to smoke at least three cigars. So you think it actually helps? I think they're smoking more. Yeah, correct. Crazy. Along with potato chips and gummy well, worms. Well, that's the problem and why I've never uh, Fried done dough. It is a major reason why I ended up doing it. Uh, cigar school. So somebody said, all right, this is stuff you learn on cigar school, these tasting things and stuff. And that's part of it that we put in there also. But we teach you the proper way to cut and light a cigar so it never unravels and you can taste the flavors. Maybe you cut your cigar wrong. Who knows? Uh, the only way to light a cigar so you can really taste the tobacco. Very important. I know you've been smoking 
smoking cigars for years and years. You're probably doing it wrong. We're going to show you on Cigar School. The answer to the age-old question, does size really matter? Dun, dun, Why dun. wine and cigars are so similar? We'll find out what's missing when you're tasting cigars. The anatomy of a cigar. I'll dissect the cigar, show you exactly what's in it. This is where the girl it. parts are. This is where the boy there parts are. The history of cigars and the math and the sizes. How cigarellos are made. Real health associations with cigar. You'll be pleasantly surprised. And uh, you can become the Cigar Authority at that point. If you want to participate in the live broadcast, it will happen on March 8th. 2024. In order for you to do it, you have to buy one of the kits. There's four available from $59 and up. Um, you can get everything you need for one person at $59, which is three cigars, double blade cutter, jet flame lighter, flavor wheel, and access to the link that will be provided for you. So you don't have much more time to get ready because we got to make sure we get the cigars out to you. Go to the CigarAuthority.com. You'll see Cigar School. Click on it. Oh, you're busy that night, which is March 8th at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, it's okay because that link will also take you to the recorded version after it's over. You'll, you can't listen to it beforehand because it didn't happen, but you can listen to it after. So that's the Cigar School thing that's coming up. And right now it's time for this classic day in classic history, and it's brought to you, listen to this, by Classic Cigars. The, the Brokeback Cowboy is no more. No more. It's all new. Hey, what about the 65 Mustang? Classic. No doubt about it. It's in the hole. That's Caddyshack, and that's a classic. Coffee. Too cream, too sugar. Coffee regular. That's a classic. Classic cigars are true value cigars using a classic Dominican blend and available in Connecticut, Cuban, Maduro, or Cameroon wrappers. Totally classic. Cheeseburger in Paradise. Classic. Bird vs. Magic. Classic. Classic cigars have five sizes for every walk of life. From boardrooms to barrooms, make your next meeting a classic. Make classic cigars part of your American comfort. One cut, one light, and experience classic cigars. Ed Sullivan, you need to save the audio. I listened to the audio. Of the whole audio you of You being that. the biggest Maduro director <laughs> in the history of Maduro directors. I don't want to hear it. You don't need to defend yourself. You just, you were I bad. Can, I can defend and myself. And we need to save that because if we get a couple more of those, we have a whole after show. We could just stitch that together. Yeah. It is a riot <laughs> to hear him bitching and moaning about stuff he never did. Oh, if only I sent it to you yesterday. Yeah, you didn't. I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Not to me. I, I no, I, did. I didn't know nothing about it till I was in your office. You said, you want to record something? I said, you're, okay. You're literally arguing with the most prepared man that you and I know. Yes. If he says okay. he didn't get but it, he I didn't get it. Did, I certainly did to Oliver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you didn't yell at Oliver for not knowing. You yelled at Ed Sullivan for really? not knowing. Yes. It was just general yelling, <laughs> I think. It was so yeah. douchey. I, I <laughs> Listen, I'm I on, laughed I'm, out loud. I'm on a roll right now with the... With I the, laughed out loud. I think it's something that our <laughs> listeners would love. Uh, a little peek behind the curtain. All right. I, I think Mr. Jonathan t took the lead last week. I don't think no, so. He no, he didn't. No. 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 All right. No. I got three. Still a loser. He got, should be able to win this week. I, all right. I got three and one... I got four and one tiebreaker. Four and one. Four and one tiebreaker. Uh... On to you, Ed Sullivan. Died today, American radio personality and author Rush Limbaugh, who's known for his uh, ultra-conservative and often controversial views, died at the age of 70. He died today. What year oh, was that? It wasn't that long ago, was it? No. 2017? 2017, he says. I think it's 2004. 2004. It was two years ago. It was 2021. Really? Three years ago. Yeah. So I win. I guess Ed Sullivan gets that one. Without going over. He oh, didn't, didn't go, go over. over. Oh, you went under. You got it. Okay, Ed. It would have been hard to go over. He's so unless ready you, to just yeah. prove you wrong. I Normally know. he wants to see me lose, but he's going after you, Ed. I know. Right. Merrick, well, because he's complaining. Merrick <laughs> comedian. He's sick today. He's sick. Yeah. I got to let him go. American comedian Jimmy Fallon begins hosting The Tonight Show. He replaced Jay Leno today. What year was that? Uh, 2012. 2012, he says. No, I think it was 2014. Two points, Ed Sullivan. Two points. It's three to nothing. On to Ed Sullivan. 
Convicted serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer was sentenced to 15 consecutive life terms today for a series of gruesome murders. He later uh, was killed by a fellow prison inmate. I don't even know what decade that was. (coughs) Seems like it's been around for a very long time. Uh, 1991. 1991. 1994. 94. 94. Ed Sullivan, you were so close. 92. You do get the point, though. Wow. I don't even know what decade. Almost (laughs) nailed it. Shutout. And the last question, Mr. Jonathan, for the shutout. Uh, Did you know that on this day, the world's first superhero appeared in a comic strip? The Phantom. The world's first superhero appeared in a self-titled comic strip by Lee Falk. Happened today. First superhero ever. Falk. Yeah, he said Falk it. Falk it. It's 1912. 1912, he says. Long before that. That that was in the 1800s. I think it was 1847. It was 1936. Mr. Jonathan does not get shut out. He does not get shut out. He's so happy he lost 4-1, to and he's happy about it. Uh, and that's what happens to somebody like Mr. Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you get. Uh, the after show, uh, uh, how to get thrown out of a cigar shop. That's what we're going to get. Are we telling to. stories? Uh, we can, uh, whatever, if you want to bring it. I, got, I have uh, ten ways to do it. Ten ways to do and it. Are some of these based on actual people yes. that have been thrown oh, out yes. of? Oh, yeah. There's all reasons for it. <clears throat> That's what I can think of. Maybe you have your own. You can but, chime in. But we're not going to name names. <coughs> no. It's not like another one of those great true crime podcasts. No, they, we they're do. gone. If they were thrown out, they're, they're gone, yeah. and they're gone, and they're gone. That's it. They're gone forever. That's it. Next week, Brandon from Big Sky joins us. That'll be a first time here on the Cigar Authority. You'll get to know him and his company. And uh, we're going to drink a few microbrew beers. Will you join me in microbrew sampling? I'll try it. Yeah? What, what about the lectins? I don't know about beer. If well, I don't research yeah, it. Yeah, don't research yeah, don't, it. Don't, if don't, I don't research it, that'll spoil it, everything. Just, because we're right. going to get into flavors. Of Take the, a the, sip just and a, a, whatever. Just a little, little touch on microbrew beer as we'll get into also. I won't discount bungee jump, but I'll try a couple sips of beer. All right. Until then, you've been listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And you may have learned something today which makes you The Cigar Authority. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network. It's part